Hey there, Soul Shines! It's Michelle here, and we're doing a tutorial today. Today we're gonna be making a slipper. Now, this is kind of more of a recipe. I have not woven in my ends on this one. I'll get there. Um, this is a toe to heel kind of slipper, and you have to have a foot to measure, or some measurements, or just guess. But this is kind of, this one's for my daughter. Um, and I'm going to be using some, this green yarn and making a slipper for myself. This is just some worsted weight acrylic. Um, you can use any yarn. I think even any size. I have not yet tried it with a smaller size. I would guess that the same concepts would be required. This is done in a half double crochet. Today I'm going to be using a size H, but you should use the size that's best for your your slipper and the size that is best for your yarn. I'll do the double crochet with the H and the single crochet with the I. I think this is a very beautiful slipper. I think it is very elegant slipper and you can do fun things. When I get done with the green ones, I actually have a little pom-pom things. Let me grab them. I have these little pom-poms that somebody gave me that I'm going to sew on the end. So I have Tinkerbell slippers. I think the green and white pom-poms will be great. I'm gonna have chapter links. I'm first going to do a section with the green. Then I will come back and do a section with the gold. I actually probably will find a different yarn to use for um, one of the sizes just so we can keep them kind of separate. Okay, I'm adding this little bit in the middle. Um, they are made for different people, so they're different sizes. This one has more stretch than this one, so that also contributes to the size difference. So those are a couple things to consider. On this one, I just worked in rounds without turning my work. So when I get to here and I get to the sides, the pattern kind of changes. I don't know how well you can see that. This gets these ridges because now they're working back and forth like in rows. And this is worked in the round. To accommodate that, actually on this one here, so that it, there isn't a change in the way that it is, I did my rounds. I turned my work on each of my rounds so that I would get the same look throughout the whole slipper. So if you wanna do that, I didn't mention that when I'm in the tutorial part, so I wanted to mention it now. You would do your round, turn your work. Do your next round, turn your work. If you want it to not have this transition and you just want this look throughout. Now technically, if you wanted, you could just keep starting your rounds at the one side and you'd have all of the ends to weave in. Why would you want to do that? But you could. Kind of like um, a mosaic crochet where they just start on one end, they go all the way across. Then they bring their next one and go all the way across and bring their next one and go all the way across. And you'd have all the ends all around. Um, you could you could do that and then do the thing where you, um, the kind of border, you could do a border around your slipper that would tie them in. You could do a border around your slipper anyway. Um, this slipper is a little bit loose on me, so if I did a border around it, first of all, that would bring it up on my leg just a little bit on my foot, which would help, because um, as you can see, even my daughter's has quite a bit more height on hers. That little bit of difference would make a difference in it staying on my foot. So I could put a border on. I could put it in a different color if I wanted. Could put different kinds of borders. A border might actually make it so it doesn't stretch as much. Or if it was still a problem, I could do. Um, I talked about putting elastic back here. I talked about, but you could also do a few decreases right at the very back if that's also a concern to help keep it on your foot at the if it happens to be just a this one's just like a tad loose okay guys um here's the thing um this may 
feel a little chaotic. I'm trying to put it, I'm gonna try to edit it as well to try and keep it as clear as possible. I'm also going to have a lot of chapters so that if you're just making half double crochet ones, you can just keep jumping to the half double crochet bits for the, the first two phases. From the third phase on, it's all the same. And there are four phases to this sucker. One thing I didn't note was it's really important that you take a couple of notes. How many rounds did it take to do phase one? How many stitches did you end up with at the end of phase one? Write that down. How many stitches did it take you to get to phase two? Uh, write that down, write down you know, how many rows or what you did on your rows if you did something different. Because this is just kind of a formula, there are also options. You may find, as I, I will mention throughout the video, you may find that your toe box is too pointy for you, or maybe it's not pointy enough by my directions. And so you can make some adjustments. You need to write those adjustments down. And I try to explain the adjustments. I also know that sometimes that confuses people. So if you are completely confused, I apologize. I'm doing my best. It's a formula and everybody's feet are different. There are ways, there's another way you can do a formula that I could do um, and might do in the future, but for now, this is what I have. Hopefully you can understand it. Remember, I love you guys. Let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is a circle. First of all, let me tell you, up here in the I cards, I'm going to have a basics playlist. The basics playlist has um, chain stitches, single crochets, double crochets, half double crochets, has a little thing about circles and things like that. We're going to, here I'm gonna use the magic loop, but if you want to do a chain two method, you can. So just to be a little, in case you don't know the magic loop, I hold it in my hands, I wrap it around my fingers, but I make an X right here, pull it around. Go underneath both of them, grab the back one, pull it up. Then I have to do a chain right here to lock that. Okay, that does not count as a stitch, that is just to lock our thing. I'm gonna start with the chain one. Half double crochet, if I were making a circle, I would do eight or nine stitches. I'm going to double, half double crochet six stitches. I want about two thirds of my size. Okay, that is gonna be my first circle. Now, I'm gonna put this aside for a second. We'll come back. And then I'm gonna use my gold here. So I, again, I'll, this time I'll do the chain two method. So you do a slip knot, chain two. Um, then you are going, oh, this would not be a chain two. This would be a chain four, because I'm doing double crochets. Okay, I'm going to do a double crochet in my last stitch, and I'm gonna do all of my double crochets in this stitch. Um, if I count this as a stitch, that's okay. I'm going to do eight double crochets around so that there will be a total of nine. If I'm not counting this as a stitch, then I need to do nine double crochets. I'm going to count it as a stitch, so I'm gonna do eight double crochets. If I was going to do um, a regular circle, I would go up to 12, but we're doing two thirds of a, a circle. So I'm gonna hook in my our slip stitch into the top and I'm gonna be ready, chain my three to be ready for my next thing. Now you can usually pull this a little bit tighter, tell a little bit tighter, and then weave this in as well as um, after a couple of rounds, I will weave this in and I will weave this in and I'll just pull, make sure I pull that tight and weave it in a couple times just to make sure that the magic loop doesn't come out. Um, I like the magic loop because it makes like no hole. This, even when I pull it, there's a little tiny hole. So that's the half double and the double. 
Okay, so I have this. It's a worsted weight. It's big twist value. I'm going to use an eye hook this time, and I'm going to use single crochets. So I'm going to do the magic loop method again, where I hold that in my hand, wrap it around the two fingers, making an X on this side, going under, grabbing that loop, and then I usually do this weird thing where I stick my finger up to lock that, like that. Now that it's locked, that's ready to go. So um, single crochets, You, this is where you get a choice. You can either chain one and go around and then slip stitch in the top loop, or you can do spirals, which means you don't slip at the end of your round. And you would do your four single crochets, because normally when you do a circle, you do six single crochets, so we're only do four. And then if you are doing the spiral, you keep going and you put your round in the next one, you use a stitch marker to keep your place. You're gonna go in the top of your first one. If you're not sure where it is, count back to four. It's right there. And we're just gonna keep single crocheting. We're gonna do two increases in that stitch. And then I gotta go get a, something to use as a stitch marker. <sighs> My dog thinks every time I get up that I'm gonna go out. So you can use a regular stitch marker. You can put a yarn scrap in there, which, let me see. I'll borrow the end of this screen to kind of demonstrate it. It would have a little scrap of yarn or a longer strap if you want to just keep pulling it up. I would hook, stick it through there. Just pull that in there and move that up every time. I'm going to use a bobby pin and that's going to mark it. Now I do have a word to note on single crochets because we are going to do on the second round we're going to do two single crochets in each one. which leaves us eight single crochets around. If your yarn is really tiny and you get the, a really funky shape right here, you can do a single crochet of six, but when you go to your next round, increase twice so that you get to eight, so that you have eight working up until the next phase. Now, the next phase, I've got to go take some pictures of my foot and insert here. In these three pictures, you can see that the size isn't the same on all three of them, which is pretty obvious, right? We use different things. We only did one round on the double crochet. We did multiple rounds on the other one, or on the single crochet, one round on the half double crochet. What we need is to get our starting circle close to the size of your big toe and your second toe together. So the double crochet is pretty close to accurate. So when I move forward, I'm going to move to phase two. I am not ready to move to phase two on my other one. For the single crochet, I'm going to keep increasing just like I would with a circle. So I, I took my bobby pin out so I can work my next round. I'm gonna do two single crochets. I'm gonna stick my bobby pin in to mark my first round. Just gonna stick it in the first stitch. And then I'm going to do one single crochet. And then I'm gonna do two single crochets. And then I'm gonna do one single crochet. I'm going to do two single crochets and then I'm going to do one single crochet and then I'm going to do one more set, two single crochets and one single crochet. 
I'm gonna measure it on my toes. Well, it's not quite covering both toes, but if I do one more set around, it's gonna be too big for my toes. But I am gonna show you what to do. If you are going to need to increase, increase another round, I would do one single crochet, do my increase, and then I would start with two single crochets and increase and then I would keep doing that two single crochets and increase two single crochets and increase two single crochets until I get back to the beginning of my round I should have an increase and then only one more single crochet because our first one was a single crochet we split up the two and this is called staggered increases and it just puts the um, it's so you don't have your increases all on the same spot. And if that's too complicated for you, just do your, just come back here. Instead of putting one single crochet in there, put in two. Make sure you move your stitch marker. Two, put your increase there and then do one, two, increase one, two, all the way around. Um, that's if you need to go up another round. I do not. I need to stop here. Because if I because I don't want to go bigger than those two toes. But I don't I so I want it to be kind of close, but if I go one more round, then I've got this side on one on this side and one on this side which takes it up like that much, two rows on each side, which takes it just a little bit bigger. If I could, if it only increased one size, so that, it, you know, I had this much increasing, then it would fit fine, but because it's going two, it's gonna go too big. So I'm gonna want to be just either the same size as the two big toes or just barely under the two big toes. Okay, so this is it for phase one of this um, single crochet. Phase one of the double crochets was done, but say you have small yarn or a really big foot, and the this does not come to the same size or just barely smaller than your big toes. If that's the case, then when you're here, you're going to do this was just one round, so you're going to do two increases, or you're going to do an increase in each and every stitch around. Because if you're using smaller yarn, um, okay, so that counts as two. And I'm going to go to my next stitch, and I'm going to do two increases, and I'm going to do my next stitch and do two increases. And um, so if you're doing a smaller yarn, you might need to do that. You might need to do doubles or if you have a big toe and, and thing. But like I said, you want it to be either the same size or slightly smaller. Now back to our half double crochet one. This one here, it's a similar concept. But this time I'm not counting this as a stitch. So I need to do my half double crochet in my stitch. And I need to do two. Remember, this was just one round. So I'm going to increase in every single round. And see, I had six in my first round, so I should have 12. And so I'm going to hook until, so not in this chain, but in the top of that first half double crochet. I'm gonna hook it in. I like to just do my chain one right away since I know I'm gonna do it. And then I'm gonna measure that against my toe. Okay, so all three of these have increased enough to where if I did another round in any of them, it would go bigger than my big toe and second toe. So let's move on to phase two. And I'm gonna start with my half double crochet. I already did my chain one. So this time, on this round, I have been increasing six times. This time I want to increase three times. If I already have 12 here, I need to go up to 15. When 
I'm doing an increase like that, I'm going to say, okay, I need 15. I divide 15 by the number of increases. So that means um, I divide it by three, which means I have five stitches. So I'm going to do, almost, I'll start with my increase. I'm gonna go increase, that counts as two. Oops, I moved to single crochet, sorry. Half double crochet, half double crochet. That's two, so I count. One, two, and then I go three, four, five. And now I'm gonna do an increase again. Increase is one, two, and then three, oops, four, it's catching, five. Okay, and now I'm gonna do increase one, two, then three, four. I have to do four again. Just pulling funny. Four, five. Now when I count around, I should have fifteen. Two, four, six, eight, ten. 12, 14, 15. So that is where I will finish my round. And now each round after this, I am going to increase by three. If you wanna do a staggered increase, like I had two and then I did three stitches. Um, if I, um, so this next round, I'm going to do an increase and four stitches. Four stitches is even, so I like to start out with my dividing that even number in half. So I'm gonna do one, two, and then I'm gonna start my increases. So I'm gonna do increase, increase, that's one, two, and then I'm gonna count until six. Three, four, five, six. And then I'm gonna do my increase, which counts as two. One, two, oops, three, four, five, six. And now I have one more increase. So that's one, two, three, four. And remember, we started with two, so that would be five, six over there. So last time I did four and I divided my thing in half to do the evens. Now again, if you're like, that's too complicated, you can just keep doing your increases in the same spot every time. So now I'm going to do one increase, my increase, that's one, two, and this time I'm counting to seven. Three, four, five, six, seven. But I'm gonna do this again. And then I got one more, seven. And then I will finish that round off by attaching and slip stitching and chain one ready for my next one. Now, there should be 21 stitches around. To know whether or not I am doing just odd, uh, it's an odd or an even. I know that my next round I'm doing to eight. If I take my increase away from my eight, that's two stitches away from eight, I get six. Six is even, so I know I need to do three stitches, do my increase, and then start my thing again. Now I'm going to do one, two, three. That's half of my six, or well, half of my eight, but my six things. So then I'm gonna do my eight by doing an increase. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And then of course I'm going to do another increase. And now I already have three over here, so I should have my increase and three more stitches to do. And that is the end of that round. 
and you will continue to work like that until you get to the size that I will talk to you about after I do um, the other talk about the other stitches um, before I go on let me talk to you about another way to count it you can do your increase and not count your increase so I need nine stitches all together including the increase but I only need seven um, between increases so I can count an increase and then go seven and then I can say increase and instead of counting that as two I can again say seven because I need a nine total two three four five six seven now if I count all the way around well, maybe after I get the stitch to not catch. Okay, now if I can't count, I should have 27 stitches all together. And then I'm going to slip stitch and measure my foot to see if it's ready yet. On the double crochets, let's talk about them. If we were making this bigger, we'd increase two all together. However, I think we're gonna try increasing four stitches. So this is kind of an experiment here because I've actually never made double crochet ones before to date. So because I did um, with my half double crochet, I did six stitches at the beginning. I increased two, increased, increased two. And then when I went to, um, I increased three around. Because I start with nine double crochets here and I would normally increase two around to get to my number and I can't divide nine and half exactly I'm gonna try increasing four times to see if I get the size that I need and if I don't then I'll come back and change it and I'll let you know so I'm gonna count that as my stitch I'm gonna do double crochet in my same stitch I came out of. That's where I want to do mine. And you can do it your way. Okay, so here's the challenge with um, trying to figure this out as you're doing a tutorial. I'm not sure if I need to increase three or if I need to increase six or if I need to increase four. Um, I'm gonna try three and see what I get. And you can kind of play around with this stuff too. So I had nine, I need to go up to 12. 12 divided by three is four, so I need four stitches. If I take my four and subtract my increase, that means I need two stitches between every one, which means it's an even. So I'm actually gonna do, here's my one, here's my increase. And then I'm gonna do two stitches. I think if I were making these, I might not count the stitch as an increase just to give, cause it kind of leaves a little bit of a hole. I think I would count it as its own stitch or not count this as a stitch in the future. Okay, so here's the thing. I can tell that doing three stitches is actually too small. And I'm sharing this with you because if you have different yarn sizes, you may find that. This is a little bit too tight to really go around your toe. It um, pulled it in too much. So I'm gonna undo this. And this time I'm going to do four increases. So we had nine stitches and I'm gonna go up to four, which is what I probably would recommend you start with. And four plus nine is 13. 13 divided by four is three plus a number. So I'm going to do my increase and then I'm going to do it as if I had three stitches and I'm going to do my increase. And I make it so I have three stitches. And then I could either put another stitch here because I know I need one more stitch. 
or I could put my other stitch at the end. So I'm, for this demonstration, I'm going to do two. Pull one more stitch in to make it three. So now I've got nine stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And if I do my other one here, now I should have 12 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And I need 13. So I'm gonna put my 13th in. And now it's not quite as pulled in and I know that that's gonna be a little bit more what I want. So I'm gonna do my three stitches. And like I said, you can decide whether or not you wanna count it as a stitch or if you wanna say that was not a stitch. And if you make it not a stitch, I probably would only do two. And then do my double crochet. And now we're going from 13 stitches to 17 stitches. So I do my um, a stitch. 17 divided by four is four stitches plus a one. That get, means that I have four stitches in each set. I'm gonna take my decrease away and I've got an even number. So I'm gonna put one and then I'm gonna do my increase because I had two, I have two stitches between each increase. So if I divide that in half, I put one here. One increase, two stitches. And then this set, remember I have a stitch here. So that's one increase counts as two, three. And then I have my four. And if I count around, I should have 16 stitches. I have one more stitch to go and I needed 17, so that's perfect. And then, because I'm counting this, I'm not counting this chain as a stitch, I'm gonna go in the top of the first double crochet. And I like that a little better for the slippers because it fills it in a little bit more so I don't have as much of a hole right there. And then you're gonna move, keep going until this one is to the same size as the end of phase two, which I'll talk about in a moment. I need to go from 17 to 21. So that means I need five stitches in each set. So I've got my increase and then three stitches between each increase till we get to the end or wherever you wanna put your extra stitch. And you know, you could start your row with your extra stitch and then just start counting your increases as well. Where you add your extra stitch doesn't really even matter. To make that to be 21, I'm gonna do it, go in the top and I'm going to try this on my toes to see if it fits and how I like it. I think on this one, I'm gonna try doing one more round and I'm gonna try it on my toes again. So I think this is gonna be okay. And now let's move on to a little comparison. So they look differently, different, but if you look at the size over here, they're very similar, like the edge size. They're very similar, a little bit different. That's okay. Our single crochets. Now single crochets are gonna take a little bit more to get there. What we're gonna do is, again, we're gonna cut our increases in half. If we start with four and we go up to eight, that means we're increasing by four. Um, phase two means we need to increase by two on each round. So I need to go up to 14 stitches. 14 divided by two is seven, which is an odd number, so I'm gonna put my increase in the beginning. That's two, and then I'm gonna need five stitches until my next increase. Now we're gonna do two, and do an increase again, and I should have five more stitches until I get to the end of my round. Perfect. Okay, I have to tell you guys, Big Twist is much softer than that golden yarn, which is probably a Red's Heart Super Saver. Again, I'm gonna keep going up like this. Um, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit um, while I'm doing it about 
kind of the toe box of our slipper. These slippers are kind of on the pointy side. Um, actually, I'm realizing that I can't really count and talk at the same time. So these slippers have a little bit of a point here. Depending on your foot shape, you actually might need to do a little bit more decreases, make this part not so pointy. Maybe you need to do four increases for longer and then just you're done and ready to move on. Um, so these do need to be adjusted for your foot. So I'm gonna keep working. I'm gonna keep increasing two until I get this to the end of phase two. As I'm looking at this, I'm having some thoughts. This may be a little bit too pointy. You also could do three increases on one row, then a plain row where you don't do any increases, then three increases, increases in a plain row um, until you get the size. I think what I'm gonna do is I'll, I'll leave, or uh, do this, and then come back in and compare them. Okay, I'm gonna do one more round, and then um, I'll put a side-by-side -side comparison. This is single crocheting, increasing two on each round. This is 30 stitches around. I am back here to 12 stitches to do the alternative. Guys, as I'm thinking here, I'm try I've been trying to do the three increase thing and I figured out I did it wrong. Originally, we were increasing by four, which means that I need to do four increases because to me, I'm like, this is a pretty skinny, like it's increasing even more pointed than before. It's because I need to be doing four increases on my increase round. So I'm gonna start this over again. Guys, this is a process. Okay, so I'm gonna leave a little bit longer tell on this one because um, when I had to undo it last time, it kinda has a little knots, kinda stretched a little bit down here. Um, so I wanted to do that. So I'm just gonna do my four and increase until I get, increase on every one until I get to that, my big toe, second toe size. This time, I'm going to do f another set with four, another set of four increases on this row. Like I said, you can play around with this. This round, I'm going to try, see what happens if I do just one single crochet round. Uh, this time I'm gonna see what happens if I do a single crochet round without increases and go back to trying to increase every other row. There are probably some math you could do if you knew your gauge. And it kind of does pull it up a little bit and now we're gonna do an increase round. Okay, so I have 16 stitches. I need to go to 20 stitches, which means that my, each one of my sets um, needs to have five stitches in it. Or that's an increase and then three single crochets. Okay, so I did my increase round. Now I'm just gonna do a plain round around. Um, as I'm doing this, as you can see the slope of this is a little bit closer to this one and that's a great thing about um, this you can try a lot of things I'm just giving you kind of a formula and an idea because I found something that worked for me I when I get up to 30 stitches around I will compare the two um, the two things and it's not so much about the height this way although if you want everything to come to the same height you would just add some plain rounds in between um it's about the slope of the th the um toe box so um i'm going to finish up until i get 30 stitches and then come back and show you compare the two hey guys um this one here is 28 stitches so i'm going to put 28 stitches next to 20 to 30 stitches so you can kind of compare the slope of the two like i said if you're thinking you need, you can play around with stuff maybe i really do want to have 30 stitches and i get up to 27 i could then increase two on the next row and i'd be there i actually like 28 better than 30 when i put it on my toes okay as we can see with the different toe boxes they fit a little bit differently. They come up a little bit higher. For myself, if I was making 
the double crochet one, I would actually come back in and I would take out this top row and do less decrease or less increases on that row just to get a little bit tighter around. I like how these three fit me, but this one makes it go just slightly bigger than I would want. Now, some people would like the way that that fits because um, however around here is gonna be how snug it is on your foot. I would want mine to be just slightly tighter. I like it to come where basically, like in my half double crochet one, where my um, pinky toe is kind of sticking out. To me, that kind of gives me just enough snugness that it fits for me. Um, the blue one, the single crochet is actually not too bad. It kind of doesn't fully cover my pinky toe. So I would probably stick with that. See, here's my half double crochet one. As you can see on my foot, it's pretty short. I might add a row in here that is a plain round somewhere in here just to extend it a little bigger, but I'm not gonna, I like the way it is. For all three of these, the rest of this is the same. You are just going to now um, do double crochets in plain rounds, no increases until you get to the end of phase three. Or if you're doing the single crochet one, you're gonna do single crochets, just plain rounds until you get to the end of phase three. And the same goes with half double crochet. From now on, because it's the same for the, all of these, the only difference between working the three sets was how we did our toe increases. Now, the single crochet toe increases, as you can see, they're, they're similar. It's a similar um, slope. I like this slope. The half double crochet also a similar slope. I like this slope. If you want it to come a little bit wider, you're gonna need a little more increases throughout your toe box. If you have really super pointy toes, you wanna do some decreases so that you get some pointier stuff. So, you know, it depends on what you want how much you want it and like I said you can change phase one and make it maybe another round bigger and cover more of your toes before you start doing the um, less increases around. Toe box right is the most important part. Like I said the next phase you are going to do um, plain rounds of whatever stitch you're using. You do this round until you get it to where you want it on your foot before we start doing the heel. Now, um, if you want it to be more of a ballet slipper and you have more of the top of your foot exposed, you're gonna do less rounds that are just plain all the way around like this. If you want it to get to the almost all the way up till your ankle, you're gonna do more. And that is completely up to you. But Tinkerbell slippers actually don't come very high on her foot. So I'm not gonna do many rounds on here. On my daughter, this foot, and I will have a picture that I'll put in, this slipper comes almost all the way to the very turn of her foot. All right, so here we are. I've got it as far up on my foot as I want it to go for this pair of slippers. Another pair of slippers I may make it longer, um, depends on what I'm, but I'm going for a specific look with this slipper. So now I'm gonna divide my number of stitches around by three. I have 27 stitches. When I'm working in rounds, I actually find it easier to count my stitches before I um, count my rounds, so I ended that. So if I divide this by into threes, 27 divided by three is nine stitches in each. But what if you have 28 stitches? Um, you would still have nine stitches with a set of 10. What if you had 29 stitches? Then you would have two stitches with, two sets with 10 and one set with, set with nine. And that doesn't really matter too much because really what we're trying to do is get approximately one third of our stitches on top 
I'm going to do 18 and we'll talk about it. Okay, I did 18 stitches around. And now I have one third of my stitches that has not been done. Um, to me, when I put that on my foot, these there's too much width across the top. This comes down too far on the side of my foot. So I actually prefer to have at least two more stitches on the side. So you're dividing it in third gives you kind of a starting thing. You know you need at least two thirds to go around. And then you can try it on your foot and you can either um, undo one or two stitches or add a couple stitches. So if you have an odd number and say we did have 28 stitches, um, I would do 19 stitches and then start playing with the number of stitches across the top. If I had 29 stitches, I would do 20 stitches and then start playing with the nine across the top. So you're gonna, once you've got this around, you're, you're gonna start, you're gonna put it on your foot again and see how you feel about how high up this comes. And you may have to do a second row to decide. When you've got it where you want, you're gonna chain one and you're gonna turn your work and go back the other way. I have gone around and the first thing I'm going to do is take a second and test it on my foot again. The reason I do that is to check to see if I still, if it's still fitting me the way that I want it to fit. And I really like the way that this one is fitting me, so I'm excited about it. And so because I like the way that it fits me, I can keep going. If you don't like the way that it fits you, you're probably gonna have to undo both rows and change it. And that's just, that's okay. It happens. Okay, to finish phase four, we are gonna keep going back and forth until we get to the back. And the back of the foot, this is just these rows sewed up, however, wh whatever way you want. I just did this at the back. So I will talk more about it. I'm gonna get to where I have some pictures. I can take some pictures at the heel to talk more about this. But you're gonna work it until you get it pretty close to where they are meeting. It's better to have it a little bit smaller than a little bit bigger, unless you're making it for a kid that's gonna grow really fast. And then you might wanna have a little bit of growing room. But yarn does stretch quite a bit, so um, that's okay too. But you do want it a little bit snugger than a little bit looser. I suggest for your first pair that you just make them in either single, double, or half double crochet stitches. Um, personally, I really like the half double crochet. Um, if you wanted to make them in other kinds of stitches, you could. You could make the whole thing in those other kinds of stitches. You could um, make the toe box in the single half double or double and then you could switch on the whole foot or you could switch just on the top. And in that, you would wanna play around. Do you want half of it to be in the new pattern? Do you want a third of it to be in the new pattern and just put the pattern on the top? If so, remember that you turn and so wherever you're doing your new round at, you're starting your new round, you would wanna do a few of your fancy stitch, then do some plain for the bottom over your half or third that you wanted, then switch back over because it is this, this part here is on the side of your foot. If you want me to do a fancy stitch, I'll do a fancy slipper, then I might do that. I'm gonna talk about something to consider for a second while I'm doing this. I was talking about how you kinda want it to be a little bit snug. Even if you're making it for kids, it's something to consider. If you're gonna have a short toe section here, this short part, um, you're gonna especially want it. This one here, if it's a little bit loose back here, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna mostly stay on the foot because this comes up on the foot a lot. This one doesn't come up on my foot very far, so if I don't have this, the heel kind of so that if I kind of stretch this, therefore it's snug on my foot, that's going to fall off the back of my foot and these are gonna be hard to stay on. So I do want this to be a little bit snug. So I wanna kind of stretch this while I'm measuring so that it doesn't fall off of my foot. 
So I'm going to insert the picture here of how far it is. That's slightly stretched. You don't need to stretch it like, oh my gosh, stretch. Some people may actually not want any stretch at all. They want, um, they don't want to have any negative ease. And if that's the case, but you, but there's a problem with it staying on, you could put some kind of ties or something that come up around your ankle, either from just in front of the ankle or long ones from the back, kind of like a ballerina. I mean, like you could totally turn this into ballerina stitch slippers by just putting a couple of things like ribbons that people tie up their feet. Oh my gosh, kids would love that. Um, so they, once you get it to where they're almost touching or touching when stretched, then you're ready to finish it. Now you have options because I give options, you know. You could um, cut this off and leaving you yourself a good, at least, you know, at least probably 12 inches or so and do some kind of any kind of any of your sewing whip stitch stuff that you do very effective for somebody who has issues with texture or because I'm lazy and I don't want to sew it right now just want to finish it I turn it inside out and then fold it together like that um, which you might want to do if you're going to sew as well, just to keep um, so that the seam's on the inside. I'm going to go through this stitch on this side and my last stitch over here on this side. I'm going to slip stitch down. And that is how I'm going to go. I'm going to go in the neck each stitch and I'm just going to slip stitch all the way down. Kind of not, I don't want it to be too tight because I don't want it to um, pull in funny. Although some people might, and if you want to, that's okay. Oh, I have another idea that just came to mind of what you can do um, if you want to keep it and not have any ease. You could um, put a little bit of elastic up here like some of those um, ballet slippers at Walmart. Um, they have a little bit of elastic here at the end and you can put some elastic back there that would help keep it on but still have this loose on the foot heel. That's an option. I, like I said, I like to give you options. So I'm just gonna keep going in all of my stitches down here until the end and then I'm gonna tie it off and I'm gonna cut it off and I don't know where my little scissors are right now. I'm too lazy to go get them. I have gotten up so many times from this and I'm just gonna um, weave that end in and there, once my two ends are woven in, that is my slipper. And I will tell you, I'm gonna have to redo it. Um, I just tried it on my foot and it's still a little loose for me. I pulled it a little bit too, or didn't pull it enough for my taste. So I get to undo this and undo two rows to make it a little bit. That's one of the nice things also about having the um, slip stitch closed because then, because then I can easily undo it once I undo my knot. If I've tried it on before I sew it closed. I'm gonna do this again. Also, next time, my suggestion, I'm gonna turn it this way. And so my yarn is coming from over here. And I'm gonna go from, this is the alternative. If you have your working yarn in the back and you turn it, you can go like this. It's still the same concept. I'm slip stitching in each stitch down one on this side and the one on that side. Um, it probably would have been wise for me to not cut my yarn until I tried it on. And if you are planning to sew it together, you could try pinning the two edges together, trying it on your foot and see how you like it so you know whether or not you need to undo a row or add a row before you change it. Another option would be if you are doing um, say half double crochets and you're there and it's like a little, you need just a tiny bit space, but if you do a whole 
row it's not going to work you could do um one row of a single crochet right there at the back and it's not going to matter on in the end to have one row single crochet or um same with the the doubles you can kind of change that last row a little bit if you need to now i'm going to try this on my foot again and see how i like it now okay i do like it better i still might see if i can put some elastic in the very back right here just to help a little bit um, if I were to make these slippers again, um, I would probably actually add another stitch, at least one if not two stitches across here so I have a little bit less space here because that's part of the problem is I didn't go up high enough on these to um, accommodate. And that's the, see, that's just the thing. That's why you take notes and stuff. I wanted to pull out my little white pom-pom thing again and show you how stinking adorable that will look on there. Um, if I wanted a bigger pom-pom, I could do a yarn pom-pom, I could do a fur pom-pom, um, I could do, uh, I could make a ball with yarn. Let me show you. So I have this one. Um, can you tell that my daughter wears a different size shoe as me? Plus this is a lot more stretchier than this because um, this is a DK weight and I used an H. This is a worsted weight. I used an H. Different yarns, um, different size feet. She wears our, like a seven, seven and a half. I wear a size five and a half, six. And then my daughter, my other daughter's right between us. But I made this eyeball and this is part of where the Tinkerbell slipper idea came from. This is just a white ball that has these things on. And so the white that would be another alternative is to make a white ball, a big white ball, because Tinkerbell slipper is pretty big. This is way small compared to hers, but it's still so cute. I'm going to use it. Um, you can make eyeballs to put on your slippers. You can make um, ears. You can make all kinds of things to you can play around with different stitch patterns. There's a lot of things that you can do. Or you could leave them plain. These are actually very pretty, just plain like this on the feet. Alrighty guys, I talked about um, that border, putting the border on there. I'm probably gonna do that with this pair. B, I'm probably gonna finish both of them and then do that. That's it. I hope this wasn't too confusing for you. I hope that you understand how to do phase one, how to do phase two, how to do phase three, and how to do phase four. I'm not too concerned about you understanding phases three and four. Phases one and two, I'm not sure with three different stitches if that confused you or if you're good. So with that, remember to let your light shine through your creations. If you do make these, you can tag me on tag me on Instagram at so magical Michelle. My Instagram is down below. I would love to see your slippers and see what you do with them and how you do with them. If you have any questions, leave them down below. My email is also in the description so you can check it out there. Like I said, remember to let your light shine through your creations and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.